This weekend, I competed in the Digimon Trading Card Game 2022 Championship Finals in North America and placed top 32 after earning my invite the night before. In other words, I went from LCQ to top 32. Here's the story. What's up, YouTube? My name is Domino with a zero, and I have not made a video on this channel in a very long time. And when I did, it was Pokemon videos, and that is not what we're here to talk about today. I competed at the championship finals in North America for the Digimon trading card game this weekend and managed to place top 32 in the country after a not so probable run. And we're gonna talk about it all today. I'm gonna to do my best not to blabber on, but I probably will. You can check out the timestamps below for the deck profile, the matchups, the shout outs, whatever you wanna check out. Thanks so much for checking it out. It was a crazy weekend. As I said, I did not have my invite going into the event. I paid to go to this event, not even knowing that I would get to play on Saturday or Sunday, just hoping that I could make it in through the last chance qualifiers. For this championship season, I wound up playing Grandis as my deck, as I thought that that would be the best deck in the format. And I, I still might think that it is, but it just wound up not working. I lost in at least four different store championships and three of those at the final table of round four in the third game to security luck. Two hammer sparks and one time where I hit a double X antibody to pass the turn and wound up losing the game um, to Melga. That was absolutely my demon through this season. On top of that, I had horrible showings in regionals the entire way. I never made it anywhere close to getting my invite outside of those store championships. Before the LCQs were announced, I was hoping that they would announce them so I could try to go on this trip, but eventually I decided that I wasn't gonna make it because there'd be no point in going, spending all that money just to get there and not be able to play in the event at all. Um, my team, NFD, managed to convince me to go and I'm, I'm so glad that they did, obviously, uh, but it was definitely a last minute decision to go compete at this event. On Friday after getting there, we had to compete in the last chance qualifiers, the LCQs, and they were doing 16 man blocks and they told us that there would be 29 blocks throughout the day. Each attempt at the LCQ was $30 and I wound up having to play in four of them over, the, over that day. I wound up competing in the very first LCQ and the 27th LCQ. So while technically I guess there was a 28th and 29th LCQ that happened, my matches finished after those. I was the very last person to get the prizing from the LCQ and qualify for the main event on Saturday. For 29 LCQs to fill, that would be 464 players that competed and I managed to be one of the 29 that advanced on to the next day. Throughout four different LCQs, there were definitely some crazy matchups, but we're gonna talk about those after we do our deck profile. Then on Saturday, we had our Swiss rounds, the actual tournament itself, where 1,001 players were competing to be one of the top 32 to make it to play in the finals on Sunday. Throughout the day, I had some, I, I never knew that it would come to top 32, so there's nothing to show you. I have no pictures, there's no B-reel. I never knew that I would get to where I was. In round five, my opponent broke at least eight of my sleeves, and I, know, and I noticed three more in the next round um, from the way that he was shuffling. My deck was double sleeve, and he was shuffling it very not carefully, and then called me out on having, it was a very odd situation. After round six, I got deck checked and got a warning because I had both of my decks in my deck box. It, everything was against me to make it to finals. As far as my matchups win, eight of the nine rounds that we played, I felt extremely comfortable in. One of them, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing and managed to figure it out on the fly and made it all the way through. At the end of Swiss, I finished 11th out of 1,001 people and qualified for the top cut of 32 players to play in finals on Sunday. In finals, I was matched up against a Grandis player, which Grandis, as I said earlier, was the deck that I used for the entire season. So I, I'm, I'm using my War Grey X deck and I'm playing against Grandis. I felt extremely comfortable. I knew absolutely every possibility of what could happen and I didn't see a Greymon X. Uh, through half of my deck in game one, 
and seeing one of them, I would have won that game very easily. And then game two, I just got high rolled by Grandis. It happens, there's nothing you can do about that. After all of that, I finished top 32 in the nation after not wanting to go on this trip, being convinced, and then having to qualify through LCQs and being the very last person to qualify. It was an absolutely crazy ride. I have so much more to say about the matchups and all that, but first, let's do a deck profile of Wargrey X. Wargreymon X was my choice to bring to this event. Agumon is obviously my favorite, as you can see, if you just do a little bit of looking around or if you know anything about me. Um, and as you can see on the screen, we've got these incredible sleeves. Shout out to Zen Dragon Design, my good friend Steven, uh, who made these custom for me along with the mat and even the grandest sleeves that I have. Um, you can see his link in the description or in the description down below, uh, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, but let's do our deck profile for Wargray X. This is a deck that, as we've said, got top 32 at Nats. I know that this deck list is not going to be the most original thing. Um, with as with as common as Black War Gray X is, a lot of this is very much the same. But we're going to go in depth about because we're we're just going to have some fun with it. So let's get to it. First, we've got four of the drawing Coralmon. Now I saw a lot of the Black War Gray players that I played were playing the um, plus one K Coralmon, which I understand, and maybe it's better in that list. But I don't believe it's. I, I certainly don't believe it's the right thing for this. I need to get to my Omnimons. I need to find my Omnimons in order to close this game out as the Wargray X player. So this card, I'm drawing a card every time I draw. In addition to the Gurrymon, those are our eggs uh, because I will always be drawing with the Gurrymon. I just need to draw a card when I swing and I'm probably swinging for big enough with all of the other boosts and things that are going on. I think this is the worst card of the deck, um, but we have our BT5 Searching Agumon. And we play one of every art because we are just cool like that. Uh, but this card sucks. Um, this card bottom decks the X antibody option every time that it's played. Um, so I hate this card, but it does good in that it grabs an Omni and a Greymon. So if I have to play it, I, I guess I could be good. But having to play this early in the game without having an X antibody option in hand, I am guaranteed to bottom deck my X antibody option and it it, it it just upsets me a lot. This card is, I think, the worst card in the deck. The best card, <laughs> the best rookie is probably Agumon X um, for the exact opposite reason um, that the other Agumon was bad and that this will find e any of my pieces, either a Greymon or an Omnimon, but more importantly, will find the X antibody option. Without the X antibody option, I literally can't do anything unless I get a cool boy and a tie or a memory boost. Uh, there's just no way that I can get to level six um, without having the X antibody option. That's obvious. Everybody that's watching this probably knows that. And then of course our last level four in the deck is boosting Agumon, uh, DP boosting promo Agumon. Um, this card is extremely important to get over stacks. Obviously, what else do you need DP boosting for? Um, this is, this is, uh, this is, the card that never shows up in turn one. Um, this card, I, I don't know that I've ever seen it show up uh, in, in my opening hand. Uh, whenever I play Memory Boost, I can always count on this card being there. Uh, it, it's not really logical, but for some reason that BT5 Agumon is the one that always shows up. And this is always the sixth card, the first draw off the top. So when I go first, there's no chance I'm ever gonna have this. Moving into level fours, we play a two of BT5 uh, Gray Mon to give us DP boosting and to also make it a sneak play um, getting into our higher levels. Because um, if I have, you know, I can Digivolve for one essentially, right? It gains back a memory. And then I can go into Gray X, gain that memory back from Cool Boy. And then I can go into a level five for two. And then I have a War Gray X just, just there and going. And it's big enough that depending on what level five I do, I can potentially swing over my opponent. Um, when I'm attacking, but that's a whole combo that we'll get into once we get to those higher levels. But uh, this card is good. I just don't need to see it all the time because the DP boosting is most relevant, I believe, against Jessmon because um, we know how big that guy can get. It can be big against Shoutmon. It can be big against Black War Gray, depending on how many Yuyas they have or if they played the BT9 Metal Greymon X. Um, this card can help get over that, but it's not something I need to see all the time. And of course, we got both of the arts in here. And then the card 
that is probably not long for the deck. Uh, we have the Greymon X, one of the more important cards um, for both Black War Grey and for War Grey X. I think this card is a necessity. Um, I think the other Greymon X sucks, um, <laughs> at least when this is an option. Why would I not play this when it's an option? I can get into my level five for two, and it gives me a different type of protection with the X antibody. The Greymon X, in addition to the Alteris mode that we're playing, uh, is the same type of protection. So if I wind up using one of them, then I can't use the other one. Whereas this one protects me even if I'm a level five. Um, as I said, Black War Greymon X is the most popular deck right now. So everyone knows what this card does. But unfortunately, I don't think this card is gonna last very long uh, with a potential ban list coming. The most important for the War Grey X deck specifically is of course, um, the starter deck, Security Boosting Greymon. And does it surprise you that we have one of every art? We didn't have one of every art in the deck, uh, in the deck um, during the run though, but we were able to acquire the last one. Um, this card. Then we get to level fives. Starting it off, we've got ourselves the BT-8 Virus Metal Greymon. This card was not in the deck two weeks before Nationals. Uh, it absolutely was not. But uh, in after a session with a teammate where I could not beat his Jessmon deck, I decided that this had to be put in. I needed to be able to knock down Jessmon just a little bit so that I could get over it or that I could have War Greymon X at least attempting to delete it. Um, this was the way to do that. It's obviously also very good into Shout as long as I can kill the thing because we know that Shout DX is, is really strong and just de-digivolving it, leaving it there is just never the option against any of our decks. We're always trying to do this card so that War Grey X can then pop whatever we're looking at uh, with his effect. This card was very important against, uh, against the Blue Flare deck that I didn't know what I was doing because um, I bluffed that I was going to do this with, to my opponent. He saw me pick it up out of a search. He thought that I was going to do it, so he wound up leaving something there, assuming it would get de-digivolved, and I was able to go into a different level 5 um, to take care of everything. The other thing that this de that this card obviously does is the ability to swing over unsuspended things with a dragon kin. Um, there is a level 6 that we're running that will blitz, and it is a dragon kin. Um, so being able to sneak into this, go into that, we can swing, we can swing over something and then War Grey, go into War Grey X and then that will pop something else. The, this card I think really unlocks the power of the deck and I think this is actually a preview for the raid War Grey X that is coming uh, because it's going to work the same type of way where you'll be able to attack but then you can go into the, you can have piercing as well. Um, I think this card is, is a very, very smart choice. Uh, in the War Grey X deck. Moving on, the most important level five of War Grey X is of course going to be Metal Grey X. Um, card boosts 3K until the end of your opponent's turn. So a lot of times you're give, you're sitting at 15K on their turn, um, which is very important. They can't just swing over with anything. They've got to have some type of boosting. And if I've done my job and deleted them as War Grey X should, um, then I'm not worried about that. Uh, 15k is really big and then of course the extra security to check because I'm trying to get through their security as quick as possible. The decision between Black War Grey X and War Grey X seems really obvious to me um, because the goal of the game is to clear my opponent's security as fast as possible or I guess to clear it before they clear mine but if I go as fast as possible then that's exactly what I'm doing and this card helps me do it. Um, I was at four for a very long time until I decided to go down to three because I do need to see this card every game, but I probably only need to see one of it every game. And there's a, there were a lot of times where I would have all four in hand and I, I can't do anything with four. It doesn't stack on top of each other. Could you imagine if you could stack this card on top of each other? That would be, let's, let's not give them any ideas. Anyway, we know how great this card is. Lastly, of our level fives, we've got three of the Metal Greymon Alteris modes. The first thing that comes to mind when I think about this card is deleting 5k or less. That's it's just a uh, wind digivolving effect if I have a tamer. So if I have a simple little cool boy down, then I can just go over here and clear stuff that's 5k or less. It was going to be the sneak play uh, in my top 32 match against um, the grandest player 
after I de-digivolved his after I de-digivolved his Okuamon that was in Razor that was on the board uh, and popped one of the rookies. I could have gone here to pop the Kabuterimon that was left, and I could have gone here to pop the other rookie. I had it in my hand. I just did not see the Greymon X. The other obvious important thing about this card is the um, protection effect where you can trash two of it. So again, stacking two on top of each other is really strong, especially when you then have this, because then you can just get rid of those two, and then you still have this card. So if you have a Greymon stack under, which you probably do, um, then you can protect it there as well. Um, this card, super duper important and very much almost won me my top 32 match. Moving into level sixes, first up, we've got two different arts of the BT1 War Greymon. Um, this card gains a security attack when digivolving and doesn't check options. We've known this card for a very long time. I, I've learned not to use it for the not checking options unless I'm playing against Security Control or Mastemon or something like that. Um, but I very rarely don't evolve into War Grey X on top of this card because of the difference in DP. Swinging at 11k, um, obviously with your boosts, is very scary because it's probably up to 16k. Uh, if you have the promo Agumon, you have the War Grey X under it, um, you'd be swinging for 16k and the thing that got me off of it was uh, in training against um, my local good friend, Ryan. Uh, he was playing Shout. I swung into security for five checks with this guy, trying not to hit any uh, anything in security, specifically not trying to hit Sunrise Buster. And I hit an Akari. He played a, a Darulumon, minus 3K, and the next check was a Shoutmon X7, and I died. And I wound up losing the game. So I. I really try not to swing with this card too much uh, unless I can get over 16K, I suppose. Um, but the extra security check is why I love this card so much. Then the namesake of the deck, we have three of the War Greymon X. Uh, I need to see it every game. I probably only need to see it one time. So I, I don't think there's any need to play this card at four. This card is just busted. The fact that it deletes something and gains back memory, I don't know what they were thinking with this card. Um, <laughs> this card is just ridiculous. I think it's just a little too aggro for people, which is why people don't play it as much. Maybe that's just my own opinion. Um, I like to hold forward and I like to try to win games as fast as I possibly can. Um, so this card is just very important to do that. And that's why I chose this deck um, because these are, these are my guys. I'm so happy that we were able to, I was able to win. I was able to top with my favorite Digimon. That's, that's probably one of my favorite things about this is I did it with one of my favorite Digimon. The last level six that we have is EX1 War Greymon, which has won me more games that more games than I probably remember. Um, so on top of the BT8 Virus Metal Greymon, this is the card I'm talking about that will blitz and it's Dragonkin. So you can play it down on top of it, Digivolving, passing turn, and swing blitzing into whatever's on my opponent's side. And then if I have X antibody, I can Digivolve here. I'm probably sitting at 17K with the 3K boost and then another 2K boost. So I'm boosting five, 17K. There's nothing that big. I'm not worried about swinging over it unless it's like a, a Black War Gray X that's big or if it's a Jessmon, sure, I guess. Um, the other really solid thing about this combination uh, is when this card swings, if you have a Tamer, it deletes a blocker. So a lot of times when a Black War Gray stack is in front of me with blocker, I can go into this swing and it will attempt to delete the blocker. He has to save it with the X antibody option. I did evolve here. My attack goes through, um, which they should be blocking. Um, but uh, they one of my opponents just didn't block the attack. Um, so either I'm going to wind up being big enough that I that the deletion effect then deletes the Black War Gray X or the Black, yeah, the Black War Gray, or um, at the end of his attack, he'll delete it. Um, this combination is very, very strong against Black War Gray X. I did not lose to a single Black War Gray X um, the entire weekend. Spoilers for the matchups that we'll talk about in a minute. And then we've got level sevens. One of the weirdest things to me was having people come up to me and ask if I was the guy that had four Omnis in my deck. Uh, it, was, it was very odd. 
Um, but um, we do have two of the Blitz Omnis. I am not explaining this card to you. If you don't know what this does, how did you find this video? And then for War Gray X, we know that Omni, the new Omnimon X is really good because it will trash a card. So the idea is we swing for 45 checks with War Gray X. We clear that, or let's say we get them down to one security. Then we go Omnimon, and then we use X antibody to go into Omni X, and that's just game. It'll also bottom deck an opponent. This card, actually, without this card, I would not have won the last LCQ. I had two Examon staring me down, and this card simply bottom decked both of them. Um, and then after D digivolving the third one and narrowly escaping a fourth one, we were able to get through that round. That was definitely one of my toughest matches throughout the tournament, and I think it was round two of the last LCQ that I did. I, I wish he would have made it in. He was really good. The other Omni that we have is the old Omnimon X Antibody. I just don't think enough people are playing this card. It's so important against Grandis. We all know that. But um, it also won me a match against the Blue Flare deck that I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, game two, I just made a really huge stack that could have stopped five attacks. And he couldn't get around me. He was stunning my Omni, so he couldn't swing. But I just made a stack in raising, promoted, and there was nothing that could be done at that point. Uh, four Omnis is the way to go. Um, don't don't look into that for um, the BT12 raid war great yet, because I don't know if four Omnis is the way to go there, at least in my opinion. For Tamers, we've got the two of Ty. What, what, what do you want me to say? What, what, what do you want me to say? Extra security attack. It's really good. I may be changing this, though. I may be changing this though because at some point you're swinging for more security than your opponent has, but this is not a video to give you hints on War Gray. Uh, and then we've got three cool boys. Um, this card's broken. I really hope that this card doesn't get banned or doesn't get limited um, because it's, it's, it's just phenomenal. However, this card definitely bottom decks my security plus Greymon every single time I play it. So when I'm forced to play this card turn one and I don't have one of those Greymons, I have to mentally prepare to see that card go to the bottom because it happens just absolutely every single time this card is played. Um, but this card plus a Greymon, a Greymon and raising plus a cool boy on board, and I have a War Grey swinging for three checks, passing one memory. That's that's that that that's really good. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And then. Speed run these last ones. We've got the X antibody option. Uh, this card never shows up, which you could say, you know, put it to four. No, I don't need it that often. Uh, but it, it just, it, it never shows up. Uh, and when it does, it, well, I guess it showed up enough. I, I got the top 32, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't show up as often as I'd like it to. Um, and I don't think I hit it once in security this game, this, this, this tournament, now that I think about it. Um, but we know how good this card is. I really hope that this card sticks around for a while longer. This is another one I don't wanna see gone on a restricted list. And lastly, we've got two of Red Memory Boost. Uh, as I said earlier, this gets me my boosting Agumon. Um, so it, it is very good. And it allows me to get into the BT1 War Greymon. Uh, after I've done everything, I can pop the Memory Boost. I'm usually at one, pop the Memory Boost, it'll go to three, uh, and then War Grey, Boom, 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 swing for five checks, throw the Omni at their face. Like, what do they do? I, I I, don't have the answer. That was the deck that earned us top 32 at Nationals. War Grey X, one of my favorite Digimon. I'm so happy that it worked out the way that it did. Now let's talk about our matchups. So I had to play through four different LCQs. That means I spent $120 after I got there just to qualify for the event. I get it. I get it. Why did it take me four attempts? I don't know. I do know. Let me tell you. In the first LCQ that I played in, which was the first LCQ that was played because I was a fifth person in line on that Friday, Grandis beat me. Now that's a theme, okay? That is a theme of the weekend. Grandis beat me. That's the only deck that really beat me this weekend, which is upsetting because it was the deck that I used. I'm rambling. But Grandis didn't just beat me. No, this Grandis player humiliated me. This Grandis player played a Davis. And I was like, okay, Davis, cool. I know this list. Uh, I think I was one of the, I don't want to say I was one of the first to try it, but I was trying it long before Grandis even came out. 
Um, so maybe I was one of the first to try it. Um, but this player, I got my Omni X on board, which should be my auto win card. When I play this card against, where is it? When I play this card right here, this one, this one right here, against a Grandis, I expect the game to be over. Like they should just be scooping because there's no way around. No, this person put the card Hearts Attack on the board. You don't know what Hearts Attack does. I'll explain it to you, but don't try to act like you know what it does. It's a three cost card. You know what, I'll put it up, I'll put it up right, whoa. I'll put it up right here um, so, so you can check it out. Um, but Hearts Attack is three cost from BT1 and it says, trash all of your opponent, all, all of the sources from one of your opponent's Digimon. So this is, this is how it went. He said, Hearts Attack. I said, what does that do? He said, it trashes all of the sources in your security. And I said, well, then what are we doing? Next game. Uh, I, I was blown away, especially because then his friends sitting next to him, also playing in the LCQ, went, I told you it would work. I've never been more humiliated in my life. And it was by a teddy bear. In the second LCQ, I also lost to Granis. I just got high, high rolled, it happens. And then I lost to Jessmon in the third, which we're just not gonna talk about that. Very standard, very standard Jessmon matchup. My deck just didn't wanna play. And then we got to the final LCQ, the fourth LCQ that I played in, the 27th one overall, um, where I wound up, I bottom deck two Examon on one turn. I D-Digivolved a third one and I narrowly avoided a fourth one to get a win in the second round. And then the last round was against Metal Guru Mon X, the deck that had beat me in three store championships throughout the season. And he was playing Hammer Sparks and it was, it was extremely terrifying. And I really thought at the time that it, it, just, it made sense. Okay, oh, of course I'm playing Metal Guru Mon. This will be the deck that stops me from getting into net. Um, and I wound up, I, I guess we could say I'm the one that wound up high rolling that time because um, I swung through security. I did my Omni, new Omni X play to trash his last one. I even had to explain how it works because I was just moving so fast after I saw that I had it there. And I was able to qualify through there. I started my day of Swiss with three straight rounds of Grandis. I know how strong the deck is. It's the deck that I used. It's the deck I was considering using at this event. But three in a row was crazy. In the first one, Old Omni did what it was supposed to do. There was no hearts attack this time. In the second one, that I, I wound up losing my only round of Swiss in the second round, and it was to a high roll Grandis. Can't do anything about that. Uh, it's just a race and he wound up racing. He wound, wound up out racing. I think I've decided that in BT11, overpowering Black War Grey X might be my favorite thing to do. As I said in the deck profile, EX1 War Greymon is so important because it deletes a blocker, attempts to delete a blocker, they save it, I go War Grey X on top of it, and I wind up deleting their stack. And it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and even with the redirecting, it's not much of a problem because if, if they're doing that, I still probably have two swings on the next turn and I'll be gaining memory back from that, or not two swings, two security checks on the next one. Uh, and I'll be gaining memory back to build up another stack for whatever they're about to come out with as well. I think that War Grey X has a very favorable matchup into Black War Grey X. Now, I do have some really, really good Black War Grey X training partners um, that made it to w whenever I saw someone flip a Coralmon, especially when I realized they were playing Black War Grey X, it was definitely a relief. Um, I don't think I felt nervous in any of the games that I played against Black War Grey X. My fifth round opponent that broke a bunch of my sleeves was playing Crossheart. And in that match, in the first game, I went first and I had to hard play a level five. And if I remember correctly, if I hard played the Alterus mode. Um, in my mind, I don't think Crossheart can do anything to a 7K person put on board, except maybe a Shout X7, which you pro they probably won't have enough of their pieces, so it's gonna wind up giving me a bunch of memory, and then I can just try to build up in the back, or I can hard play another one, uh, which is how game two went. I'll get there in a second. But game one, he did nothing to me. So 
after I got my turn back, I went into Metal Gray X. I think I even went into War Gray on top of that, swung for three checks, retained turn, and we're just good to go at that point. Um, so I wound up winning that game after hard playing. I hard played a level four and he deleted it with a cross seven. And then I hard played another level four and I still won that game, which just goes to show when you break my sleeves and then you call me out for having broken sleeves, the deck heard that guy. And I was, I was able to, to win. Um, I, I, I shouldn't have won those games. How did I win those games? This deck is just broken. I believe my round seven opponent was another War Gray X player, uh, which wound up just being a, a race. And my opponent won game one. Uh, I think it, he seemed a little newer to the deck than I am. Uh, I started playing War Gray X in June when um, uh, when I also started playing Grandis. So I'm, I'm quite familiar with it. And it just seemed like my matchup experience or my experience with the deck uh, helped me get that win. In round eight, I went against a blue flare player who was phenomenal. Um, this person absolutely knew what they were doing uh, and, and I, I, I definitely luck sacked them. In the first game, after I saw that it was blue flare, first of all, I didn't know it was blue flare for three or four cards in. I did not do the correct preparation um, for that deck at all. Um, I decided that I needed to figure out what was going on so I could win games two and three. Um, and I was pretty sure that you weren't supposed to put two bodies on board against Blue Flare um, because then they can do all their stuff. So I just played two bodies on the board and I made them show me exactly what they were doing. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, saw all the way up through the level sixes. I was able to read everything. I was able to learn everything. And then game two and three, I just went. Game three, I definitely high rolled. Game two, I, Omni X was the guy. I made a huge stack, stopped five attacks. They were freezing this every time, but I just made a stack in the back, brought it up and just overpowered them for the game two win. In one of the games, my opponent saw me pick the BT8 Metal Gray out that D-Digivolves and thought that I was gonna D-Digivolve their level six that was out. They had two armor purging level fives under it, the Cyber Launcher. I still don't know what the cards do in total, but I knew that it had armor purge, so the deletion wouldn't work. So they left their, they they swung and left their level six sitting there. And I just went into a different level five and deleted it. Um, so I think my smart level five play there definitely got the win. Um, that person also wound up making finals. Great person, really happy that they also qualified for top 32 because they, they, were, they were one of my harder opponents throughout the day for sure. My final round was against Black War Gray X, which I'm, I'm not gonna lie, when I saw that, I started feeling a little confident. At the time, we didn't know that would be the last round. So I started feeling confident that we were keeping the run going. I squeaked by in game one and definitely high rolled in game two, top decking the X antibody option and my OTK Omni Omni play um, while I was like drawing on my third or fourth turn. It was super early on and my opponent just couldn't settle in. Now that I look over the notes, I remember that that was the game that I went into old Omni X and I was D-Digivolved into just Omni to which I was able to go into new Omni X to win the game. I, it was really crazy how I was able to do that. We pulled off that round and then my friend Jesus, who went undefeated in Swiss day one, wound up winning the last at the top table. The pair down had lost, so that was the end of it. We qualified for top 32 after being in the LCQ 24 hours earlier. My top 32 match, as I said, was against Grandis, and I felt so confident. I had mapped out everything. They let the top seeded player choose who was going first. So I had thought through everything. I was I was already in turn four or five um, by, the, by the time we got to the start of the match. I decided to let my opponent go first and in the first game, he didn't see all of his pieces. At one point, he had an Okuamon and two rookies on board and had Grandel sold my stack away. So he gave me seven and he made the comment that he didn't think there was any way that my deck could break the board that he had. To which I was, I was a little confused because he had just studied my deck list and there was definitely a way that we could do it. 
However, we wound up not being able to draw the Greymon X. The play was from seven, we play Agumon, we go into Agu X, we go into Greymon for one cost, we go into Greymon X, we go into Metal Gray D Digivolving his Okuamon and popping the Terriermon. I had two Alterus modes in hand, so I would have been able to delete the Kabu Terriermon, that's a 5k blocker, and I would have been able to delete with the other one, the other rookie that was sitting there. I wouldn't have been able to attack that turn, but then I would have had something in raising and a level five in the battle area after already seeing two of three Randell souls. I would have been in great shape, but I went through half of my deck searching with Cool Boy. That, that turn I played two Agumon searchers. I drew with Cool Boy and I even played a memory boost and, and did not find a Greymon X. So it just was not meant to be. Game two, I just got high rolled, um, just just steam st just, just, just steamrolled me and that brought the run to an end. Uh, my opponent was able to go get top eight, which was just phenomenal. Um, so congratulations to him, um, great guy. I wish I would have seen that Greymon X. It would have gone differently. It would have gone differently. After the run came to an end, I had the opportunity to interview with the team from Japan for a video on Bandai's website sometime in the future. I'm so excited to see that. And of course, we got ourselves the top 32 jacket for the Digimon Nationals. Now, I'm not foolish enough to think that I did this on my own. This, this was absolutely not on my own. First thing, shout out to my team, NFD. The training, we have been training for this event since October. And as far as I'm concerned, me topping is all of us topping. This is definitely a, a culmination of all of our efforts. Uh, even though I wasn't planning on going to Nats until the middle of January, um, we, have, we have been training hard. I've been paying attention to what you guys have been doing. Um, so thank you so much for all of your help. Special thanks to everyone local as well that I played, especially Ryan and Jesus and Justin and everyone else that I've thanked along the way. I've already thanked everybody, just not in the video. Lastly, again, shout out to Zen Dragon Design, my friend Steven. You've got to check him out. Go check out the link in the description. Um, these sleeves came straight from him, as well as a play mat that looks the same, as well as the, the grandest sleeves that go with it. You got to check them out. So that's my story about how I went from LCQ to top 32 for what I think was just an incredible run. Thank you to everybody for the congratulations. Thank you to everyone that helped me get there. Thank you so much for checking out the video. We'll see you again.